After the disappointment of the previous two expansions, we all knew before this even launched that it was going to do one of two things. Legion would either be the nail in the coffin for World of Warcraft, or its last chance to come back from the downward spiral it's been on lately. Now that it's launched, while it's still a little too early to tell for sure which one this ended up being, I can confidently say that World of Warcraft isn't dead just yet. Now obviously this is being made before any raid content is even released to us. So this is just my opinion on the content that we have currently. I will definitely however be doing another video when all the content's been released to us, with a new revised score taking into account how well the expansion's held up with all the new content. But based on what we've seen, the future of this expansion is actually looking pretty positive. The leveling experience is one of the first things you encounter in any expansion. And in Legion, as soon as you start, you're introduced to one of the greatest differences about questing in this compared to questing in other expansions. And that is your class campaign. These are pretty much main storyline quests that are unique to your class. And for every class, you're taken to different locations doing different things, and all with different storylines, so it keeps it refreshing for every new character you play. It feels a little like Swotor, where every class also had their own class storyline. While the stories aren't different when you change factions like they are in Swotor, there are more classes to choose from than Swotor, so it leads to just about as much variety. And also, like Swotor, every zone has its own unique main storyline to it. But where all the cinematic events and neat plot twists happen only in the class storylines for Swotor, all of the quests in Legion, even some of the side quests, are interesting on their own. And speaking of side quests, it's not like your usual MMO deal where all the side quests are acquired from the town hub, just like the main quest. Which is the mistake that a lot of MMOs make when dealing with side quests. While in Legion, on the other hand, there are some breadcrumbs that'll lead you to a lot of the side quests. But for the most part, if you want to discover the side quests, you have to go out and explore, since most of them are off the beaten path and none of them are marked on your map until you find them. This takes the focus away from the mindless grind that MMOs are so infamous for, where you just pick up quests and follow their location on the map. Now there's more of a focus on exploration and discovery, and this is helped by the treasures in the rare mob system that's making a return from WAD. And while that expansion was far from perfect, I will say that those two systems were one of the things that it did right. But this time, finding those treasures and rare spawns is actually still useful even in higher levels, since they give you power for your artifact and resources which you'll need at all times, even in high levels. And also, unlike WAD, all the zones are no longer level locked, which means you can level up in any zone in any order you want, regardless of your level. Which was a major issue in WAD, it made the leveling experience so linear and boring. So now instead of always having to drudge through your least favorite zones first, now you can go straight to where you want to go. And speaking of your artifact, that's another thing this expansion does really well. Your artifact will serve as a secondary progression after you hit max level. So if you ever hear people say for an MMO, oh it only starts when you hit max level, it's especially true in this case. Which isn't a bad thing since as I said before, the leveling experience in this expansion is fantastic. And then if the leveling alone wasn't enough to keep you occupied, then you have so much more to do once you hit max level. So every time you log in, no matter what character you log into, there's always going to be something for you to do. And so what will you be doing most once you hit max level? That would be a feature that's new to Legion called World Quests. These are events scattered all throughout the open world with various objectives and rewards and locations. Every day new world quests are added to random locations on the map, so they kind of serve as your dailies. And every day there will be a bonus reward for completing four world quests in a certain zone. The rewards are useful no matter what item level you are, and the gear rewards, which are rare, are tuned to your item level. The scarcity of gear rewards from world quests makes it so that dungeons or raids aren't obsolete as endgame content. And while these world quests don't quite embody the sense of exploration and discovery you find in the leveling experience, it still manages to bring the endgame out into the open world for once without being boring or tedious. And while I'll admit some world quests are a lot less exciting than others, at least there's plenty of variety to them. And if you've noticed that Legion now has higher system requirements than before, know that it's not without good reason, since all the zones have incredible detail and all the vistas are stunning with the new draw distance, certainly not least of which being Suramar, the level 110 zone. This zone easily takes its throne as the most beautiful zone in the entire game. Suramar City easily looks as beautiful from the outside as it does on the inside, which is to say very much so. It's not just the game's visuals that are impressive, but also the soundtrack. Legion probably has one of the greatest scores I've heard out of any expansion to date, and I genuinely feel sorry for anyone who plays with the music turned off.
Now in Suramar, while outside the city, the focus is more on the aforementioned exploration you get in the leveling experience trying to find survivors of exiles and rally them to your cause. Whereupon reaching the city, the focus shifts to this more Assassin's Creed style gameplay, where you're trying to back a resistance against a leadership that sided with the Legion, with all kinds of rooftop climbing and hiding in plain sight mechanics much like Assassin's Creed. Now as I understand it, not everyone might like this as much as I did, but I can at least tell you this much, I thought it was fantastic. Going back to the whole exploration focus, there's so many secrets and little surprises littered all over the Broken Isles. So many things you can just hear about one day and be like, oh, I never knew that existed. Like the artifact fishing pole quest being just one example. And while clearly we don't have the whole story yet, since a lot of that's going to come with the raids, everything that's happened story-wise so far this expansion has had me hooked. I'm dying to know what happens next, and for the first time in a World of Warcraft expansion it gives off this feeling of hopelessness like we might not actually make it out of this alive. Now Blizzard has said there are more expansions planned after this so we know we're going to make it out of this alive, but so many things are happening in this story that makes it feel like we might not. And if dungeoneering is more your thing as opposed to exploration, you'll be happy to know that even this early into the game's launch there are already more dungeons than there were in either of the previous two expansions. And Blizzard has mentioned before the launch of this that they do intend to add new dungeons to every content patch. Just like in some of the older expansions where a content patch would usually have a raid, some open world content, and maybe even a couple dungeons. Which is a luxury we've missed out on lately. And as for the dungeons themselves, I've thoroughly enjoyed all of them, uh, well maybe except for one. But I digress, ever since they've added the mythic difficulty to raiding, I've loathed it. Not because of the option to go into a higher difficulty of content, but because it gave Blizzard the opportunity to make less content because there are more difficulties in each tier. And now since then, mythic difficulty has been applied to dungeons as well, and the potential this new difficulty has had it really shines through in this expansion. Because this time they're not just using it as an excuse to skip on more content. So instead of spending more time with less content, we're back to having as much content as we had before the introduction of Heroic and Mythic, but now we still have a reason to go back to them once we're a higher gear level, so none of the content can ever become obsolete, and you only have more and more things you can do as you get higher gear. And while I don't really play WoW for the PvP, I'd be remiss if I didn't say anything about the Underbelly, which is the new PvP zone in Legion. Since I'm not really a PvPer, I'm not going to go too in depth about what the Underbelly is, but essentially it's this lawless free-for-all PvP zone underneath Dalaran. Players can bribe the guards to go on and off duty, which switches the area between PvE and PvP modes. In the PvE modes, these random bosses will spawn throughout the sewers that everyone has to team up to kill, while in PvP mode, chests will spawn throughout the sewers, kind of like the Gurubashi Arena in Vanilla. This transition also can happen in the middle of a boss, which can cause everyone to go hostile in the middle of it, leading to some fairly hectic and exciting scenarios. The currency you get as rewards from doing underbelly events, these sightless eyes will sometimes give you rewards on their own, but are mostly used to buy items that will help you get even more sightless eyes, which is useful because some of the really good rewards are from the achievements for getting so many sightless eyes. The whole idea was interesting and fun, and while I'm not really huge into PvP, I did enjoy the time I spent there. Now with all that said about the content, it's time to move on to the features in Legion, starting with the new class, the Demon Hunter. I don't know how else to describe this, but this new class is simply a joy to play. It has such a heavy focus on mobility, not just in the double jump and the glide abilities that they have, but even in the combat rotation you'll find yourself dashing and leaping around to do damage to enemies. With a mix between agile melee attacks and demonic magic, it really feels not only exciting, but like its own new class, not just like a Rogue 2.0, which is the biggest fear I had when I heard the class's announcement. Next we have the new Transmog system, which if you haven't played since Cataclysm, is the system for changing the appearance of your gear. Now in Legion this system's undergone some changes, it still has some room for improvement, but it's still a change for the better overall. The way it works now, and this is gonna sound pretty obvious at first, every item you find has an appearance. Once that item is bound to your character, its appearance is usable by all characters on your account from now on. Items you do not have the appearance for will be labeled as such, so you can be sure to bind them to your character if you want it. In order to apply these appearances to your character, you have to visit a transmogrifier, which I don't agree with. I do think they should have just made it so you can do it at any time, anywhere. Although if you're like me and you really need that capability, there is a mount you can buy that has a transmogrifier attached to it. Now with dropped gear such as what you get on bosses, you have to be the right class for that piece of gear to be able to use it. For example, you need to be a plate wearer to collect plate transmogs, and you need to be able to use two-handed weapons to collect two-handed transmogs. 
Now I don't necessarily like that, but I understand why they have that restriction in place. Gear from quest rewards is another story however, as long as you've completed the quest, any rewards available from that quest will be unlocked as a transmog appearance from now on. Slots that can be hidden such as shoulders, helmet, and cape are now hidden through the transmog feature, which I'm not a huge fan of because it means that you can't just hide your cape or helmet on the fly anymore. And it also means if you want to switch it back you have to spend gold to transmog it into something. And now with the new interface you can organize sets, so that if you have different appearances in mind you don't have to memorize them. And now you have the ability to apply different transmog sets to different specializations. So now your prot warrior doesn't have to look the same as your fury warrior anymore. The appearance of your gear can now change when you switch specs without charging you extra gold. And not to mention, you can switch between all three specs at any given time now. So you're no longer restricted to your choice of just two specs. Which is handy with the artifact so you can switch to a protection spec for example if you want to get the protection artifact without having to choose it as one of your specs. Avoid unpleasant situations like this. Another change new to Legion is a total audiovisual overhaul of melee combat, which includes unique animations for every ability and brand new sounds for basic combat actions such as parrying. This is an extremely welcome change as melee often felt like you were just doing the same motions over and over again for every ability. Especially for combat rogues since some of their abilities even use the basic attack animations. And then the last two positives worth talking about, not really worth talking about it in too much detail, but still worth a mention in this part of the video, is that for one, a couple of specializations for certain classes such as survival hunter and demonology warlocks have been totally overhauled and they feel great to play. And second, the UI for professions has gone through a little bit of tweaking. And it makes the menus much less of a hassle to navigate now. And gathering professions have gone through a little bit of a revamp on their own. Now when someone gathers an herb or a mineral deposit, it'll still linger for a little while for other players to mine them as well. And lastly, but most certainly not least, in the same spirit of that tweak to the gathering professions, attacking mobs will no longer tag them. Now instead, everyone who attacks the same mob will get their own separate loot and quest credit. A change that has been needed for a long time in World of Warcraft. Now I kinda had to hold my tongue a few minutes ago when I was talking about the new combat animations for melee, because with this new change comes an expectation for other classes as well. An expectation which is unfortunately not met. If you play a hunter or any caster class, you'll be met with the disappointing reality that you didn't receive any kind of update like melee classes did. For casters, every ability uses either one of two animations, either the directional cast or the upwards cast. God forbid if you play a hunter, you'll notice that every single one of your abilities uses the same animation. One animation for hunters. And then some abilities don't have an animation at all. Cough cough arcane shot. And then meanwhile all the melee classes have unique animations for every single ability, it leaves hunters and casters in the dirt. And next, while I enjoy everything else about the class halls, it's downright travesty that these mission board missions had to return from Warlords of Draenor. I wish horribly that I could get my hands on the little shit who told Blizzard, oh boy, I love these mission board missions. Because nobody loves these mission board missions. It was pretty much a universally hated feature in Warlords of Draenor. All it does is places an artificial barrier between accessing more real content, of which there is plenty in this expansion, so there is no reason to have this kind of restriction. You need to do certain mission board missions to complete your class campaign, and you need to do your class campaign to access most of the content. Of all the lazy things Blizzard has done in the past, this takes the fucking cake. Reintroducing content that everybody, absolutely everybody complained about because it's easy to make. We want to play the game, we don't want to walk up to a mission board, press a button, wait 8 hours, collect our 11 vials of griffin piss as a reward, and then play the game. And most of these mission board quests tell you exactly what your followers are going to be doing, so they should have just made it so I can go do that myself. And speaking of lazy, while the random legendary drops are a nice touch to the game, the appearances they chose for them are beyond lazy. They aren't just reused appearances from other items, they're reused appearances from old low res items. If the idea was to evoke nostalgia, they should have done high res revamps of old gear. Anything but this, this just comes off as lazy.
as horrible as the follower mission system is, I don't think I would remove it completely because it does have a few merits. But make no mistake, if I was in charge, it would be drastically different. So a few followers in the game have the ability to be assigned as a bodyguard. First thing I would do differently is give every follower that ability. And then as for the missions, and this is going to sound crazy at first, but just bear with me. Keep every single one in the game exactly as it is, and then you can either do them as they're done right now, where you assign followers and it takes like 8 hours or so, or you could go to the location of the mission in the in-game world and do it yourself, which would take like 5 or 10 minutes or so. That leaves options for both people who don't have a lot of time so they can assign followers to do it for them while they're away from the game, and for the people who have the time to spare to do it themselves faster. And to prevent over farming of this mechanic, add a kind of a daily limit on how many missions can spawn a day. Of course I would also be happy if they just removed it entirely, but I do see the potential in the follower system to be interesting and fun. Something that can work for the game instead of being cut out like a tumor. And on a completely opposite note, while I love the artifact system, I see some major flaws with it that I would change. Well, really only one major flaw. While I get what they were trying to do by giving us all these lore significant weapons, such as Ashbringer and Doomhammer, the sentiment is entirely ruined as soon as you reach your class hall, and you notice that every other person of the same spec has the same weapon. So clearly the first change I would make is to not do that. Instead, make your artifact quest kind of like a forge your own legend type of thing, where your artifact doesn't have this pre-established history, the history of your artifact is your own history. And then give players the option to name it and customize it much more than you already can. Not only with more preset choices, but also with the ability to mix and match different parts from each preset. With the appearances for the parts of those lore significant weapons such as Ashbringer, being hidden artifact appearances like we already have in the game. And lastly, without spoiling anything, the Broken Shore scenario that serves as the introduction to the expansion gives us just a small taste of our first cross-faction content we've seen in the game. But it also sets the stage for us possibly not getting any more. I really wish they hadn't done this. Because if they hadn't, we'd probably be seeing a system where people on other factions can still play with each other, with cross-faction groups and raids and possibly even guilds. And make it so on PvP servers the group's PvP flag is based on the leader. So if a group with both Alliance and Horde players in it is led by a Horde player, for example, then everyone in that group, regardless of faction whose PvP flag, will be flagged as Horde. Hell, it might even open up the opportunity for Alliance players, for example, to raise reputation with Horde cities. Although admittedly, that is kind of a stretch. And I'd be totally fine with just being able to group and guild up. And so we come to our closing thoughts and final verdict on the game. And again, I need you guys to keep in mind that this is not a complete review. While we have gotten access to our first raid now, and I have had the chance to go through it all, this review takes neither the raid or anything that was introduced alongside it into account. I'm going to do a separate video near the end of the expansion with a revised score taking into account all the endgame content. So the score for Legion, as it was when it launched, is an enthusiastic 9 out of 10. Even completely fresh into the launch of Legion, there's already more for us to do than there was in the entirety of Warlords of Draenor. And while Warlords of Draenor also started out pretty good, its main problem was that it failed to deliver on future content. This time Blizzard has promised us that there's tons more on the way. It's not perfect, but no game ever really is. While, like I said, there is already more to do in this expansion so far than there was in the entirety of Warlords, it is still true that Warlords also started out well. So the biggest question on fans' minds is will we get burned again? And the fact is, we still can't answer that with 100% certainty just yet. But it is looking positive. Thing is, Warlords was an expansion that was only meant to last one year. Which, in Blizzard's own words, is an unsustainable model that they're looking to get away from. So as a result, there are plans for more content in Legion than there was in the last two expansions, which were using that one year model. So whether or not this answers the question of will we get burned again, will have to depend on how well they keep up on this expansion's content. But it's looking optimistic and I'm excited to see where this expansion goes. But until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Make our presence known, send a shiver down every demon's spine, raise our colors with pride, demon titler. <laughs> I will send shivers down their spine. The demon diddler has come. <laughs>